Welcome to All About the Experiences. Today marks my 35th episode, and I have to tell you, every single time that I am able to come to the platform and bless you with another amazing person who has an amazing story, and today is no different. Today, I have recording artist, R&B recording artist, Sean Tuck. Now, you may not have heard about Sean Tuck just yet, but let me tell you, you will. This man is multi-talented. He comes and hails from, I will say this, the state of California, which obviously I'm from California as well. So good things come from California. And this is my first time meeting him myself. We are mutually connected via his management, who is a very good dear friend of mine, who also is someone that I have personally worked with and have found to be nothing but uh, the gentleman I'll say with the Midas touch. So we'll get into that a little bit later too, because mm -hmm. I feel like in this organic conversation, you can't get any better than to know who to align yourself with. So without further ado, I am going to welcome to the, the center stage and all about him, uh, Sean Tuck. Welcome, Sean. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Excited to be here. Thank you for I'm having me. Excited to have you. My goodness. So I wanted to give our viewers as well as listeners a little <clears throat> backstory on you. Obviously, um, I said it in the beginning in the intro that, you know, you are an R&B artist, but you are so much more than that. And I feel like the best way to learn about someone is to hear from them themselves. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Sean. Well, um, nice to meet you, Cheryl. Nice to um, meet you. It's funny. I mean, I consider myself a husband first, you know, father second. Good answer. <laughs> but then... I'm still at that rough patch where I'm trying to let go being an athlete because being an athlete has been so just rooted within me and I'm trying to just shift over into being an artist. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, the artist, I mean, the, being an athlete part, I feel like that's really the hardest title for me to drop at this point in my life. And it's, it's really hard. It's really hard. <laughs> Well, I heard like being an athlete, you have to be very disciplined and tell me, since you, you mentioned that you're an athlete and this is something that you are uh, constantly kind of in limbo about too, what is your sport of choice or are there several sports that you participate in? Um, I would say several sports, but I mean, out of high school, I got a scholarship to play football for the University of Idaho. So that's where my main focus was, but I mean, baseball lives heavily within my family and that was always my best sport, but, you know, to keep a focus, I would definitely okay. say just football, you know, so just trying to remove myself, especially when I still have friends who play, I got teammates who are still in the, you know, in the league, it's hard for me to remove myself completely, but you know, they, what they say is every athlete wants to be a rapper or singer and every singer <laughs> wants to be an athlete. So I got the best of both worlds. And nothing wrong with that. I, I say this all the time. There's nothing wrong with being multifaceted. And so if that means that you're playing several sports, that's just um, more opportunities for you to also bring in that other element, which is you being an artist. And mm -hmm. we all know that music moves us, but we also know that sports is America's pastime as well as other countries. So I feel like you're having all those worlds collide. And so that's always a plus for sure. So exactly. you mentioned baseball. Who is your favorite MLB team? I'm a Braves fan. Okay. Atlanta Braves. Uh, and is yeah, that because that's where you're residing or is that just always been the case? Well, I actually reside in Idaho. Oh, okay. You yeah, record and, in Atlanta, But I record right? in Atlanta. I fly back and forth. Um, awesome. So funny story. My great uncle, which is my manager, Henry's uncle, he was the batting coach for the Atlanta Braves when okay. they won the World Series in the 90s. So, I, you know, I just always – and then he went to the Cleveland Indians or the Commanders, I believe they are. But Yes, the Commanders. <laughs> yeah, I, I've just always – which – I have a friend who is their pitcher. It's, it all goes full circle. But, yeah, just growing up, 
I've always just been an Atlanta Braves fan just because he was their batting coach. And that's just where I stick. Even though I'm from California, uh, the Angels, they hold second dear to my heart. But the Braves, I can't. I, I can't. Got you. They're number one. My team, because I grew up in East Oakland, so obviously it's oh. the the, uh, the Oakland A's. Yeah. Um, much like um, I know that our football team has since left and relocated to Las Vegas, but the Raiders, Raiders girl till I die, Raider Nation. So I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, I hold true to all of that. But you know, any team that um, when I'm on the fence, if it's not one of my teams playing, it's always definitely it, it's going to be a California team that I support. And that yeah. could be a little problematic in a household where my better half is from the Midwest. And so, Oof. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already know how that goes. Absolutely. I already know how that can go. Nothing wrong with a little friendly competition. I'll say that. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Well, um, let me ask you this with um, because obviously how I became aware of you was through your music. And uh there was one song in particular. I know that um Pull Up is your latest uh single that's out, which it, it knocks everybody. If you haven't heard it, there will be a link to it. And I uh, encourage everyone to go ahead, download all of Sean's music. It is very heartfelt. It's definitely um he has some 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 bangers in there for sure. But it's real, um, I promise. It, it truly is. Um one of my favorites I'll say is sacrifices. And so, um, again, we're both from California. I'm from East Oakland. And um, I feel like look, within the last, what, three years, as we have emerged out of this pandemic, everybody has gone through something. We have all made sacrifices. And I know I've seen um, what I can gather of your story through your postings on social media it looks like not only is your music career um, a labor of love, um, but I can tell that you've made uh, quite a few sacrifices to even get to the point that you're at now. So tell me a little bit about the musical journey and how you got there and what your music is rooted in. Well, long story. So my mom, she was in a group called uh, Brent Jones and the TV Mob in the 90s. Okay. So music has kind of just always been rooted in my blood. And it was kind of something like I try to ignore. So I was like, oh, I'm good at sports. So I just, and I knew I was good at singing and doing that stuff. But I was like, I want to do sports because, you know, let me just do that. And then my grandpa was a professional jazz player. And uh, we'd be at parties. We'd be, <laughs> when I was playing football at co in college, we'd be at parties and I'd freestyle. And they'd always be like, oh, you wrote that. And I'd be like, no, nah, I didn't write it. So that, And I had a few friends back home in California that encouraged me to, like, just keep rapping, whatever. So eventually I left my scholarship. And I was like, I'm going to do music. And even though when I – so, like, what people don't know is before I even dropped my first mixtape, it took me, like, eight years because I wanted to find my own so – I'm, I'm a perfectionist. I have OCD, so – <laughs> nothing wrong with that it, Look, and but it's it's something that can hold you back but you know so I had to learn to just you know put stuff out at the same time but okay. and I also gave myself to the age of 27 so I ended up dropping my mixtape right at 27 and then I wow. got found by this guy right then and there and um and which let me take you back so my mom she's very Christian so am I so we go to this that. house. I'm like 11, and we go to this house. So mind you, sports is like the main thing on my mind. And we go to these these prophets' house, and you know I don't think nothing of it. And they're all praying over me, and they tell me, "Oh, you have a beautiful voice." Blah blah blah. Like we hear people hearing your voice, and I'm like, "What?" Because they just told this kid next to me that they see people that he's gonna get drafted to go to like the NFL, and that was my dream. So I was I started crying like, "What?" You know. But what's crazy is. The same year I dropped my mixtape when I was 27, it was the same year he ended up getting drafted by the Panthers. Wow. So, so like, it all, exactly. It all, so I was like, okay, maybe. So I started doing it. And then my dad contracted GBS, which is. What is GBS? Um, it's an autoimmune, it's an autoimmune disease. Okay. And it's, 
it's called the name for it is Guillain Barre uh, Guillain Barre disease. Okay. Or no Guillain Barre syndrome. Syndrome. And okay. Pretty much, you get paralyzed, and what it does is. So I try to tell people the difference between that and being paralyzed is if you're paralyzed, you can still eat, your stomach will digest and everything. But when you have GBS, your organs shut down, all that stuff shut down. Oh my. So when I recorded Sacrifices, I actually happened to be on disability from UPS because of a back injury. Okay. But I got, I got found doing from my mixtape. So I was going to the studio in LA and... I recorded the song because I was going back and forth every single day from Orange County to Hollywood. So for those of you who don't know, that's about 55 miles. And then right. I was going every day to see my dad because he was paralyzed and he was on a ventilator. Mm. And I had to record that song at the same time. So there, those times, there's times where I was in the studio recording that song that you like. And I call my dad, the nurse would answer and he'd just be laid up in bed and I have to, you know, FaceTime him. And like he'd have tears rolling down his eyes, but it was, it was but it, I feel like it made me stronger. But so that song is actually one of my favorites too. That and now mm -hmm. are like my two favorites because it's like, and I actually explained that to one of my friends yesterday, and they're like, "Whoa, we didn't know that this song hits a lot different now." But it was a Absolutely. lot of stuff that I was going through during that period, and on top of that, the sample of the beat is a baby crying, and I was leaving my daughter every day when she was like, like brand new, so. Right. There was a lot of factors going into that song and well yeah so you know my dad's good now he was paralyzed from the neck down but he still can't feel from his knees down but he can walk and do all that stuff that's fantastic but, yeah but and they said it was like the worst case that they've ever seen but you know it was a it was a struggle making that song but at the same time it, it was one of my best songs that, that came out of it during those hard times it spoke to me. I listened to the song even before I met you and it, it spoke to me. I could feel um, all of those emotions that you just described. Um, I guess it holds true that artists that put what they're going through in their pain and all of those emotions into their music, it's transformative. And obviously, even before I met you, I felt connected to that and I could apply it to things that were going on in my life. Even as recent, I, I recently lost um, a very close family member um, in the last week or so. And it's been really hard. And it was interesting as I was preparing because I knew that we were going to have this opportunity to have a conversation. But um, I started listening to your music and I was just like, wow. And it definitely spoke. And as you can see, that's not even your latest song that you dropped, but that was right, the song exactly. that resonated to me the most, um, especially um, as I'm kind of navigating through uh, the death of my family member. So um, I'm sorry to hear you. that too. Thank you. I appreciate that. But um, be rest assured that your artistry is touching people, even myself. So continue to do what you do for sure. Thank you. And that's all Absolutely. I want. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about this. So you're navigating taking care of an ailing parent. You are, you know, launching your musical career. And then on top of that, you're a husband and a father. And trust me, I have a family too. So I already know what all of those different things are when you're navigating all of these different elements of your life. But how do you find your balance? Um. I'm I'm currently it's all a scramble because me I was holding myself back because I was being a dad first and being a husband first mm -hmm. you know and there's times where I'd be like you know I'm not going to go to the studio because I want to spend time with my wife or I want to spend time with my kids but like I made the song sacrifice and sometimes you have to I'm figuring out especially now since I signed a production deal and having to go back and forth you've got to, like, this is for the long run. Like, it's, it's an investment. So I look at it kind of like a stock in a way. Like, it's an investment. It's going to work out in the long run because we'll have more free days then rather than now. And that's kind of my motivation. So that's how I'm learning how to balance it is just pretty much just keep the goal and the vision in sight and keep it clear and definitive. I love that. Um, more often than not, I feel that, 
um, especially a lot of young people. Like, you know, um, we recognize that the power of so social media is insane. You know, it used to be that you would have to find and be discovered or know someone in the industry to even <clears throat> get to that point where like where you're even at now where you are being recognized and you have your music on streaming platforms and things like that but now I feel like even though it's a lot different than how it was maybe when my I have some family members that are also musicians um were you know breaking out into the industry you promote yourself you are on social media and um one of the things like I told you when I was going to learn a little bit more about you, I started looking at your social media and I saw that you were a family man. You have a, a wife and two beautiful children and you work, you work at UPS. Now I will say this, I worked at your competitor FedEx. So, you know, we <laughs> have that alignment there. No yep. shade. I mean, nope. the, the brown uniforms are fantastic, but we always you know, say hi to each other on the road too. So there it's, it no, is. it's all there it is. It's all I love that. Um, but I love that you understand that the grind does not stop. And even in chasing your dreams and, you know, setting these amazing goals um, before you and your family, you still recognize the importance of being present um, to your family and your children. And um, I think speaking really to your song, Sacrifices, we all recognize that Sometimes you're not going to be at every game or, you know, every recital or whatever it is that your children are involved in or even your wife, but you recognize that the sacrifice and you not being there for that particular, you know, occasion um, in the long run, you are securing a bigger future, a bigger bag, and also that notoriety that comes with someone who has the amazing pipes that you do, because I mean, your voice is, is, it's incredible. It truly is. And um, I love that you sing about real things. It's not just, you know, um, you know, I heard recently that someone was saying, and I won't name who it was, Puffy said that R&B was dead, but I don't feel that R&B is dead. I feel like we're um, donning um, on a new day in R&B and music, but I feel like um, new artists like yourself, um, you're bringing a different element to R&B uh, to the table for us to experience. And listening to you sing, I hear a lot of um, other artists that have come before you that may have inspired you. So leading into that, who has inspired you as an artist? Well, one thing I will say is R&B is not dead. It's just different. There it is. So, not dead, but different. So, and, you know, my so my favorite artists are Lauryn Hill and Craig David. And, gotcha. like, I was literally just listening to all of the, I was showing my daughter and my son. My son's uh, 16 months and my daughter's seven. I was playing all the music videos from yesterday or two days ago. We just listened to, because I feel like, you know, she just makes good music. That just, it just feel good music, and I, I I tell people this all the time. My music isn't for you to like. If you don't like it, it's okay. Like my my music is more just for you to feel. So like you may not like it, but you'll feel it at the end of the day. And um, but yeah, learning. I I guess because I guess because I'm older, you would say, than most of the artists, and I do gotcha. appreciate like you know I R and B was like my favorite, even though I. I started out rapping because it was easier, you okay. know, you, but then I was like, man, everybody's rapping. So might as well sing. Um, the fact that you can sing and rap is amazing. That is fantastic. I, yeah. Multifaceted for sure. It, which, it, which is weird. Cause it's like, I always consider myself shy, but I guess I got to move past that. My wife was like, you, you got to knock that off. Like, stop using that as an excuse. She said, knock it off. <laughs> yeah, because, that, I mean, I really was. I, I used to be terrified to be on stage. And then I guess that's wow. kind of the thing about me liking to do music is because it's kind of like I'm scared to go on, but it's like a challenge for myself. So because when, when you're scared of something, you defeat it, then you, you come off feeling that much more. Like the feeling after is that much greater. You know, right. like even then winning football, because it's like I wasn't really scared to play football. Like that was just I was it wasn't just solely on me. So being solely on me, it you know, like I, I guess I gotta grow past. I'm not shy no more. It's it, I just 
sorry i'm not but yeah like my, my, my musical not to go too far off but my musical influence is definitely craig david um lauren hill in terms of the singing parts um but i love like in terms of my cadence and when i like do like speeding up on stuff right. i love kendrick lamar and you know roddy rich and those people and lil wayne so it's I try like I try to tell people because people try to tell me like I don't really consider myself a singer. So when you telling me I have great pipes, thank you. And <laughs> I tried I I always like I was shooting for pop. Oh. And the reason and the reason why is because pop meaning popular. Gotcha. And the reason why is because I like to say I'm not the greatest singer. So so but I, I sing better than a rapper. <laughs> But I rap I better you. than a, but I rap better than a singer. There you go. So it's like a Drake approach, but I sing better than Drake. Sorry, no shade. Multifaceted. That's what we'll exactly. go with. We'll Thank, definitely yeah, go with exactly, that for sure. Exactly. For sure. So um, I do have a few notes here that I recognize that you had a song that was released last year, and um, also with a video, and it's called "My Vibe Song." What was that rooted in and what inspired you? And let me ask you this. Do you write all your own music? Yes, I write all my own music. How? Shoot. I don't even know. I'd be asking God. But <laughs> it's funny. But um, it's it's funny about my vibe song. So I found the instrumental on, I used to, I used to always be on this like karaoke app called okay. Sing, or it's called Schmule, Schmule. And like okay. meal, as you mean, yeah, and you pretty much you can just do like karaoke and it'd have all these beats, and I would just do you know a bunch of things. And I wrote this chorus for my friend, and then he ended up coming out with the song and didn't use it. Oh, so I was like, oh, okay, so and I didn't know he wasn't going to use it, he didn't tell me, so I was like, all right, and I found this beat, I used it, and I was on this app, and I kind of like wrote the song. And like I had got a really, really good response. Okay. So I was like, I was like, let me just record it and make it like solid. And then I recorded it. A lot of people, I guess, used the beat. I tried getting a hold of the dude. He didn't let me know. And then we got a remade okay. around my vocals. And then that's how it came into fruition. I love that. And the reason why I say that I love that is that. You know, I hear stories all the time about, um, you know, a writer writing a song for a particular artist. And then the artist is like, oh, no, I'll pass on that. Like a lot of songs have fallen into Rihanna's lap or, you know, other artists, you know, similar to that by right. chance because Janet Jackson or someone said, oh, that's not me. I'll, I'll do this or no, I'll pass on that. And it's just like, you know, not everything is for everybody. I mean, people can sing a song or, you know, try to do a cover, but when it's meant for you, it's that music again, that will be a person like me who is not musically inclined at all, but I have a ear <laughs> for music, um, but will hear it and be transported by the music. So I think that's quite incredible that you were then able to have this full circle moment of taking a song that you were creating for someone else that passed on it. And then you put your vocals to it. And then here we are. Yeah. it's And it's funny because like all my songs are about either football or my wife. <laughs> that's, that's well, the there's nothing part. wrong with that too. But, too no, but it's just times. funny. It's just funny because like I had nothing to that beat and then, I was just like, all right, you don't want it. And I just kept listening to it. Actually, I think I listened to it. It only takes me like 45 minutes to write a song. So I, I was just like, wow. listen to it. And then boom. I just try to go. Like, all I try to do is find a melody. Because I've learned that more more so melodies stick with people. But I just happen to be able to put. I try to make. Because creative writing was always a, uh, a strong subject of, of mine in school. So I always try to. And I always try to ensure that like people know that I am educated. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, you know, like I can write, I but like you. I am educated, you know? So I try to just keep those notes in there. I love that. And talk about that. Talk about your education and what that journey has been like too. It's been rough. <laughs> it's been rough. I got you. It, it, 
when I say I'm educated, it's like, like I can do well in school, but it's just whenever I'm in school, especially once you get to college, when it's like you, you're on your own schedule, it's more, it's a little more lenient. Right. I started just more thinking about songs and writing. So like I'd be in class just writing songs. Okay. You know, so I, my first mixtape, I wrote like my first semester at OCC, which is Orange Coast uh, College. I, I wrote my, <laughs> just in class. <laughs> like I'd be in class like, uh, so do you to... sell your music as well you said what do you sell your music as well it i don't really necessarily sell it it's just on whatever streaming platform if you're subscribed then it's in your subscription but i mean if you're not then that's the only way i sell it but I'm, i don't really do it for them you know i don't really do it for the sales because that's not why i got into it you know why did I you got get into it, into it? You know, you know how I mean, you you know when you grow up in in there, I, I guess, where it's like respect your elders. Mm-hmm. A lot of us respect your elders. Like, you know, the sky could be blue, but they're like, oh, the sky looks purple today. But you know, you'd be like, ah, I think that's blue. No, nah, res- what'd you say? You know, right? But I did a lot of holding stuff in. Okay. But but like, in when I would hold stuff in, then I'd say something, then I'd you know, I'd have a smart mouth. But I was learning to, <laughs> like, you know, I guess I was learning to vent through music. Okay. And then, and I I more wanted acceptance. I started seeing, you know, like I have my, you know, like I have my great aunts and stuff. When we go to family reunions, they're like, oh, you talk white, you know, which oh, stuck Can you with imagine me. that? I guess we have that in common as well. (laughs) Exactly. So it's that, I mean, the fact that I'm 32 years old and that I was told that when I was seven, clearly it stuck with me. But I guess I always yearned for acceptance from the Black community. And so me finding a talent in that and people being like, oh, you know, that was where I got majority of my support from. It feels like a home in a sense. For sure. But like that, so it was more me feeling like I was heard and had a voice. That's what kind of made me jump more into the music thing. Awesome. And I heard you say that a lot of your songs are inspired by your wife and football. And I see that you have these two beautiful children that you two have created. And so tell me how that is navigating this new R and B space, if you will, and um, managing the family and making sure that you are lending time to being a family man? Well, the first, the one, I think the biggest change is that, so my new music, so after Grateful, the song that's out, my new music coming out, there's no more cursing, which is from my daughter because she was like you know and I had other people but like you know when other people tell you they're you know you're like oh whatever but my daughter was like dad I can't sing any of your songs because you say bad words and I was like <laughs> I can change Ooh. that listen at that that's like from the mouths of babes okay they will get you together Kids and it, will they really you. will yeah and it you know and I realized like I was just blocking my blessings from that because I met a kid at the airport and he was excited to meet me because he found out I did music and then he looked at me up on uh on Apple Music and he's like this is you you know he got all excited and then he was like whoa you have a lot of explicit music you know so I, I don't want to I don't want to block my blessing from and what I don't need to especially with the stuff that I talk about I don't need to so I've like all my music coming out from now on is going to be clean, but you won't feel like it's like a clean, like, Oh, it's like he's forcing it or anything. It's just like, even grateful. You don't really realize. I feel like we've become so adapted and so used to music just being vulgar or, you know, like we don't really like, you know, we don't really even understand it, but like okay. these words that we say are spells. I, I believe in my mind, you know, like it's the spells have been around for centuries, you know? So that's why I try to just manifest everything that I that I talk about on my music. Either manifest or it's everything I've been through. That's awesome. And let me tell you, you're absolutely correct in that. Um, I recently was um, 
I was in Minneapolis and I was there for the George Floyd uh, Global Memorial uh, Conference and gala and all of these different um, things that were centered around bringing about awareness and healing the community. And one of the national recording artists uh, that was there was Chub Rock. And I was assigned to, you know, um, basically be assigned to him while he was there, making sure that all of his needs were met. And one of the amazing things, um, and it wasn't until he said it, he got down, he didn't stay up on stage. He came down into the audience with everyone because he said he, he wanted to connect, especially considering what it was all surrounding. And all about, it, yeah. Yeah. And I, what I loved is like, he said, you'll never hear me disrespect a woman. You will never hear me saying a whole bunch of curse words and all this kind of stuff. And I got to thinking and I was like going back into the music because I mean, like I was so stoked to meet him. This was one of the folks that I listened to when I was in high school. So it was just like, right. you know what? He does it. And then I was just like, when do we become so immune that it's so acceptable to have all of this disrespect or you can get your point across. My mom would always tell me when you start cursing, that's when you've lost control. And like when you're having an inter interaction with someone, you want to let them know how you feel. It's, it speaks volumes when you're able to make someone understand where you're coming from, but you don't have to drop a four letter word or, right. you know, uh, necessarily be condescending to them, but also let them know you mean business. And so I love the fact that you said that. And it's like that self correction, if you will. And yeah, exactly. I love that your children inspired that in you. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I thank them a lot because I honestly feel like my music has gotten better since she said that. So awesome. just wait for the stuff that's coming. So um, I uh -oh. I know like in the in the social media realm and whatnot, uh, there is a lot. If your song gets picked up and it has a viral dance that's attached to it, you know, doing all the I'm not uh, I cannot dance either. I'll say that, too. So anyway, if you have something um, in your song, it's ended up it goes viral as a result of the dance and of course your amazing music. I thought I saw an Instagram where you had several young ladies that were doing just that. They did pull up and I was, I took a moment to try to get some of those steps in. It was oh, not man, working for me. I don't even try. I don't dance. Look, <laughs> <laughs> I don't dance. I don't dance. Yeah. Everybody knows. Who, everybody You're like, knows I don't dance. I just two step, you know? I mean, you might see me do that little joke video or something, but I don't dance. There's too much energy. I got a bad gotcha. bag. Well, let me ask you in the in the world of social media where you know self-promotion is pivotal and key, how are you? Are you managing your own social media? How does that work? We do, but you know, let me just tell you, I can't stand it. Why? <laughs> because like I said, if you want to be an actual like I'm a father, but I'm a present father. You know, I'm my present you. husband, so it's like it takes a lot of time. On, yeah, I don't like to be on my phone too much. If I do, if I'm on my phone, I like to decompress, look at reels, or play some games. But you know, okay. social media is it's all backwards, in my opinion. I don't want to even go into that. It's all just, you know, it's all backwards. I got it. It's a necessary <laughs> evil. I'll say that. It's a, it, it, that's a, that's all. That's all it is. Because I don't like the, you know, what it's doing. Like, I, I remember you. when I was a kid, I didn't have to compare myself to a bunch of all these people. Like, if I had to compare myself to a bunch of these artists, you know, in chains and stuff, maybe I did, but, like, it was just on the TV. Like, not on my, at my hand, you know. Everybody's getting cell phones at a younger age, so they're more impressionable. Right. But, I mean, I right. get it. I got to do what I got to do. So, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know? um let me ask you this. So I, I, I get where you're coming from. Like, um, even for me and my platform, I enjoy, you know, the interaction and the ability to connect with people, you know, whether they're right down the street from you or across the the globe from you, you know, mm -hmm. that's the one awesome thing is that you can connect with so many amazing people. And then you can connect with some people who seem like you pulled them straight up out of the gutter. So with that exactly. being said, it's 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 um it's kind of a give and take and a love hate relationship. I also have because I can't even tell you some of the things that I get in my DMs that have. I think when I my I chose my name or my brand all about the experiences, it was coming from a very 
interesting place. Um, it was a place <laughs> yeah. of work and all the, but you'd be surprised some of the things that I get, but I, I take all of those interactions as, um, even a motivational, um, from a mo motivational place in the fact that I have captured the attention of people wanted and unwanted, and it gives me an opportunity to show, share with them what my true, um, meaning is behind all about the experiences and i imagine you must do the same with your music as well oh yeah i still get people from high school like, you do music You're like, yeah so let me ask you this how comfortable do you feel with like blessing us with a few bars or notes uh from what song <laughs> Oh, I love it. He didn't say no. He said, what song? Well, I know Pull Up is uh, the latest that's out, but Sacrifices is my favorite. If you wouldn't mind giving a little bit of Sacrifices, that would be amazing. Yeah, I'll give you the first the first few. Uh, okay. All right, sorry. I've been stuck on this road, trying to get paper, been chasing it every day. Trying to get bread up, I get my head up, I got to work through the pain. I've been working that star up, I got a job, it's going to be worth all the pain. I'm going to relax and enjoy the pain, enjoy the pain. I've been down with me now because I've been doing my thing. All of this time I've been away making a sacrifice. Now it's the jet, I'm earning respect, and now we're loving the vet. I got to the stylist, the mileage, while I'm in the vet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you for that. I, I love it. That's the sign of a true artist. When It's, it's just like when people ask me, on, on the spur of the moment to do something that's in my genre. Like I'm a, I'm a corporate events manager and they're like, Hey, do you know this? Or, Hey, would you mind getting up here and doing an intro? I'm like, Oh, I don't even know, but okay. Yeah, I'll do it. So thank you for that. You're that's, welcome. That's the sign of a true. That, that was a first for me. That was a first, but I got to get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did it here on all about the experiences. Did, Let me sure ask did. you. Is there anything that, um, as you are continuing to grow your musical career, are there things that you would like your followers or the people who love Sean Tuck music, what do you want them to pull away from your music? That I'm real. Like, not real in the sense of like, you know, got a flaunt or anything, but like, I'm just a real person. So if you ever want to reach out to me, if I don't, I might not see it, shoot, for a month, two months, a couple of days, but, you know, I will eventually see it and I will reach out to you. Like, I'm, that's one thing. I'm not too Hollywood for nobody because, or anybody, because I understand, like, we all have our own type of bottom and we have our own, we all have our own experience. It's all about the experience. We all have our own experiences, you know. Okay. So. It is all about the experiences. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm an artist that, you know, I'm not too far away. You know, that's it. Like okay. even no matter how big I get, I don't, I'm, I'm not far away. You just DM me on some. I'll get back to you. I promise. I don't know when it would be, but I promise you, I will. Do you feel like the folks that follow you and that appreciate Sean Tuck music, do they inspire you to write um, new songs, new music? I hope so. But okay. at the same time, as much as they inspire me, I, I guess through sports, I've learned to inspire myself because, you know, they can stop following me at any point, but I can't stop believing in myself Ooh, sean that needs to go on his shirt and it needs <laughs> to be a part of a motivational speech let me tell you no true words have been said that is absolutely true if you don't believe in yourself you cannot obviously inspire others nor can you progress forward so that was a great great segue into my <laughs> next question <laughs> no, i'm glad i'm glad I love that. Well, let me ask you this. Being uh, the amazing artist that you are, um, also an athlete and a husband and a father, and all of these things that you have going on, what is your end goal with regards to whether it's your career or just life in general? What, what do you see yourself in the next 10 two years? Two words. Yes. Financial freedom. Oh, don't I'm we all need put it? I'm not going to put a number on it because once you put a number on it, then yeah. then what? I just want to, 
she can go get the groceries. She can go get her nails done. She don't got to ask me. Go do it. I don't got to no, know. Just do your thing. You know what my my thing is? And I, I get that because, you know, even um, I started off young. I got married when I was 19 years old, had my wow. uh, first when I was 21. Um, and then my son, um, I think right at 29. So, you know, we were a young family starting off. I served in the military and it was some very lean and humble years that we had. But the one thing that I always strive for um, one is being able to connect with people. And that's, this is what this platform is all about. It started during the pandemic because I wanted to be able to have an outlet of what we were all going through. And I had some major losses during that time of family members and, you know, just transitional things. We didn't know what was going to happen next. Right? right. And I also wanted to still um, stay in contact and um, highlight the relationships that I had with people that either I met on social media or through a uh, business or, you know, just in passing because everybody has a story. But then the other thing was, is that I thought about my legacy and what that's going to look like. And, you know, when I'm no longer here, like I said, I, I recently lost a very um, dear family member. And I think about right now as we are getting ready to celebrate her life and, you know, the outpouring of love that has come and consistently, everybody says the same thing about her, you know, that she was just um, a, a true friend and there anytime someone needed. And I, I think about that, like sometimes, like, you know, especially with all the social media we have, we know the first thing that people do, um, good, bad, or indifferent, they're going to post, Right. And I think about what that would look like if I was no longer here and the legacy that I leave for my children and my future grandchildren. And so, um, again, this is inspired. It's not just the podcast, but it's a lifestyle for me. It's all right. about the experiences. It's all about taking advantage of the opportunities that are before you and the connections that you um, make and each person that I come in contact with, I'd like to think that I leave a little bit of myself but I also gain a little bit of them. And I definitely feel like in having this conversation with you today, I have learned a lot more about who Sean Tuck is, the, the amazing artist, the family man, um, the athlete. And then obviously there were some pointed things that you said about checking in with oneself and saying, hey, I can't be good for everyone else unless I'm good for myself. And that's mm -hmm. amazing. That's truly amazing. I got to say, though, you helped me because I never really, I guess I'm it's an excuse in a way, but I guess I've never thought about a legacy because I feel like I've always been, in a sense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I've always been, the, I was the first one to go to college in my family. I was the first one to do this, you know, first one doing this. So I've never really thought about that because I guess... I felt like I was making mine, but that it's a good point. What am I doing? Yeah, I'm doing music, but like, is it really a legacy? You know, like for me, you know, yeah, that's how people do make their legacies, but I feel like my purpose is beyond that. So I'm still figuring it out. You're but figuring yeah, you're it right. out. Yeah. You know, that, I love that. I never thought about that. But you know, the wonderful thing about this, and I think even you made mention to it when we first started talking, like when we were talking about education, it's like you're never too old to stop learning, whether you're in a institution of higher learning, learning, or if it's just through life and circumstance and whatnot. And I feel like you are on a complete evolution of oneself. You're constantly, um, I see a lot of shirts, it's like me against me. Like I'm always want to do my next PR, you know, and it's not about how you measure up to someone else. It's about you staying in your own lane and mm -hmm. figuring that out. And, you know, it's not about how fast you get to the finish line. It's about how you finish. And I think you are a perfect example of that. Um, again, when I was starting to look a little bit into 
uh, doing research for this interview. And I said, you know, I don't like to do a lot of research because I like to be on this path of discovery when I'm talking to you myself. But right. um, I looked at your social media and I went back as far as I could. And I saw that, you know, you are, you, you practice what you preach. You're about being an athlete. You're a family man. You, um, you know, share your love of music as well. But the the core of who Sean is is definitely well represented in the posts that you have made. And I feel like social media is a highlight reel, but it is also it lays the groundwork for what we are now in this conversation, um, getting to learn more about and more in depth. And I have right. to tell you, Sean, I look forward to seeing your growth in your career. And I know the sky is the limit with you. I appreciate it. And I hope I can just make everybody proud because like I said, I'm just here having fun. And that's that's literally all I'm doing. I'm just having fun. It's a God given talent. I can't say, oh, this and that. It's just God and I'm just having fun. And I'm gonna keep having fun. I wanna I wanna definitely when you've blown up and you're on the stage with Drake and everybody else, I want you to keep having fun, Shine. And I can say oh, I that way back when you started here with me on all about the experiences and I got a chance to have just a really heartfelt conversation with you. And as your career is budding, there there is no stopping you, sir. I can definitely see I that. I appreciate it. And uh, Drake, you better watch out. I'm just, yeah, I know I'm just that's kidding. right. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta say something, you know. So yeah, Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this. Before we close out, I wanted to give you an opportunity. If you wanted to shout out anybody, I already know that you want to shout out your wife. So I, I want to give you that that opportunity to give some um, shout outs to po people who have really been instrumental um, in your career and your life to this point. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to shout out my wife and my kids, Jenny and Naya Braylon. I love you guys. Mm -hmm. um, my mom, my dad, you know, you guys have been the ones to support me since I started this. So kind of seeing them, this response is surreal. Um, my grandpa, you know, just for given me the experiences I've been able to experience to be able to put into my music that not many people have been able to experience. You know, of course, Henry for being my manager, my uncle RJ for always believing in me, you know. Yeah. It's just really been a, it, my mom, all my family, you know, my cousins, my mom, mom my, everybody who really been with me since day one and this is the thing i want to let people know is like when you support people from the very beginning it's very easy to tell who's been supporting you because we don't have a lot of followers when you right. wait until we blow up we're gonna know so i have my like you know alex and lara i got a bunch of people i got about 20 people who've been my igs my mom that, that just supported me since day one who've met who pushed me to do it. My friend Justin Velton, you know, he's been my day one. He's the one who actually pushed me to sing because I was wow. afraid to step out of that box. And he was like, man, just sing. He's like, why not? You know, and him doing that really, that's what really took me to the next. So I got to thank him the most. I got to thank my friend Matt Higgins who helped me. You know, we haven't been close since because he had to deal with kids, you know, not to put his business out there, but like, He's, I miss him, you know, and I mean, he he introduced me to music in fourth grade. He was wow. making beats in fourth grade. So we were 11, you know, 10 and 11 doing this. And that's when I realized, I was like, you know, I have been doing this for a while. And it's really, really because of him. And I just want to be able to keep his legacy going mm. more than anything. And that's why I do it. Fantastic. I love that. Um, I want to also give a shout out definitely to Henry. Henry, um, Henry Jones is yes. uh, your manager and he's a dear friend of mine, as well as, you know, I have my own personal um, working relationship in the past with him. And so I know that everything he touches is, is it turns mm -hmm. to gold, if not. And he's my cousin. And, and he's, he's my your cousin. cousin. I love this. And so I mean, when 
family. It's a family affair. And it's, it's um, amazing when you have your core that is there to support you from the very beginning and protect you. And also they're going to be real with that you part, too. that part protection. Yes. That's more than anything. They've seen yes. me from since I was a little innocent boy. So they know kind of what's well, best for me. I am very appreciative of you coming on my platform and sharing um, your story, blessing us with your voice <laughs> and really just um, your, your motivation is, is, everything and it's your birthday weekend correct it's actually my birthday today happy <laughs> birthday sean now that i didn't know Thank i knew you. it was your birthday weekend but i didn't know today was the day today was my it's my birthday got off work came straight to this and now i'm gonna get some Thank you. dinner i'm gonna bless myself with some lamb chops because i gotta find out right, every, you know? <laughs> every now and then i gotta eat classy so Nothing no, wrong but, with that. I have a feeling that you're going to have a lot of classy meals in your future, sir. So have a wonderful birthday. And thanks you. again for coming to All About the Experiences, Living Without Limits. Anytime, let me tell you. anytime you want me to come back, I'll be here. So you just let me know. I'm going to hold you to that because I'm telling yep. you, um, Sacrifices is definitely in my playlist. I can tell you that um, right now. <laughs> thank you. You guys make sure you go stream that. I promise you, you won't disappoint. Can you let people know where they can find you before we close out? Um, you can find me on all platforms. Like you see here, Sean Tuck, um, S-H-A-W-N is how you spell Sean. Let me clarify that. So on all platforms, it's Sean Tuck Music. And I'm sure once you put Sean T, you, I'm going to pop up, but that's me. I love it. And this I appreciate true. the support. It sure is. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Sean, for being here. Happy birthday to you. And thank I look you. forward to continue to see your star rise. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you guys for all the support.